Hello! I think I'm live. This sounds good. Uh, hopefully my audio levels are alright. We'll figure that out uh, just a moment. This is Wild Animal Racing uh, by Paul Bird. And despite being Wild Animal Racing as made by a man called Paul Bird, it has no birds in it. Um, this is a really weird game. And I'm going to start the timer now because this is a showcase percent. Uh, if the timer actually wants to cooperate. There we go. Okay, first things first, the controls. Uh, they're fairly simple, WASD to steer your cart and uh, control and space to apparently shoot a gazelle. Um, we also have, bizarrely for a game like this, about 10,000 languages. I have no idea exactly how these languages are translated, I'm guessing Google Translate. In any case, we're going to be running this in English. Um, <laughs> we're going to go to single player. I don't think there is any difference whatsoever between any of these animals. So, we're going to go with the giraffe. And before we get started with actually running through the game proper, I'm going to show you how well made this game is by uh, taking us to the rally course. Now the first level of this, whew, it's quite a thing. You don't actually have an accelerate button. You just, you go forward or you go backward. You basically tap the controls to decide whether you're doing that. You don't need to hold anything down. First thing I want to show is this, the power-ups. The AI will never pick them up. And if you pick them up, it will immediately spawn another one on there. Um, the second thing I want to show off very quickly before we start this proper is I think around this corner. Ah yeah, there we go. Um, we have up here some marker flags, which we can drive through. I have absolutely no idea why they're there. Um, they are the marker flags for the rest of the course, but why the hell are they off to the side? And yes, the marker flags have absolutely no collision detection whatsoever. One thing you're going to notice in this is that the physics are completely insane. Um, but okay, let's, let's actually get started. We're going to go through every cup. Every cup has three races in it. This, oddly enough, despite being the top one, is one of the more difficult ones. These diamonds that you see give you points every time you pick them up. Um, points have absolutely no meaning in the game itself. They are used for unlocking bonus videos later on, and I've unlocked all of them and I will be showing them to you because they are something spectacular. This game also has more rubber banding than a stationary store. Uh, if you are in first place, then the AI carts will move faster than you can possibly move. Um, if you're in last place, on the other hand, they will slow down quite a lot. Collision detection is very, very wonky. Uh, the physics are completely insane, as you will see fairly soon. Yeah, I accidentally touched someone there, so... Uh, you know, that obviously sent me careening off the road. The thing with the rubber banding is that coming first doesn't necessarily mean that you're, you've got a particularly good time. Um, because if you're in first to start with, then, well... One other interesting thing about the power-ups is that when you pick them up, you have them for a limited amount of time, but you have infinite of them for that period of time. So I'm just spamming out bananas behind myself. Um, this can lead to some ridiculousness. If all of those bananas haven't been hit by the AI by the time we get back around to that part of the course, you'll see what I mean. This instance we've picked up the bubble. I have literally no idea what this power-up does, except that it screws with the physics in a really interesting way. Um, at first I thought it was a shield that saves you from power-ups, but that does not seem to be the case. Now we've got a mallet that automatically swings to the side of the nearest vehicle and smacks them, sending them careening off the course. So yeah, that was from one banana pickup. That was as many bananas as I could throw down. And that is the end of the very, very first course. Got 11 more to go. This is one of the more boring sets of courses in the game. Things will get more ridiculous as we go on. The general strategy with this, when we're not 
breaking the game's physics, which we will be doing at certain points, uh, is to cut corners as much as is humanly possible. The AI roughly sticks to... I love the physics on the rockets as they hit walls and go flying off into the sky, incidentally. Um, <laughs> Yeah, generally you want to cut corners. The AI pretty much sticks to the same path, unless it gets confused and starts going backwards, which it does indeed do. And that's what happens when you hit a banana, the screen spins around and you get very, very confused and feel slightly ill. Um, there's not much to talk about on these levels. These ones are, as noted, fairly sedate. There's nothing too clever or fun you can do with them. Um, it's really just more of a showcase of some of the uh, some of the game's basics, shall we say. The game's physics. This game was made in 2016, I believe. Uh, despite looking like a PS1 game, I'm pretty certain this came out last year. Ah, uh, there we go. We just saw the lion going backwards around the course. One other thing you might notice, actually, is if you look at the minimap, you will see that there is no checkpoint marker on... Oh, quiet time. This level has amazing music. So I'm going to hush for a moment. Now this, this is the sort of music I like. Uh, this is Iceland. Iceland is not part of the World Tour course for some reason. Uh, and the way to do Iceland is basically to skirt around the side of the volcano as much as possible. The one thing that I really love about that is that even when you actually go back up onto the road, you are still driving on two wheels because it keeps your position, essentially. I'm driving on one side, so obviously when I go up there I'm still driving on one side. Um, also jumping along here just actually kind of hops me up in the air. It's, uh, it's a bit odd. But yeah, the fastest way to do this course is indeed to just basically go around the interior of the volcano because, you know, gravity, what's that? Nobody understands how gravity works. You cannot blame a person for making a game in which gravity and physics, you know, don't function in a way that you would expect. Why would you? But yeah, instead of drawing on a little checker mark on the map, you just have a percentage of how far through the course you've gone up there. Um, now normally the speedrun strats for this are you press escape. Uh, when you finish a level, when you finish a uh, the third level of each course, and then it dumps you back to the course screen, essentially. But in this case, I want to show off this wonderful board where uh, they're looking very sad, as you can tell. Um, okay, the second one, World Tour. <laughs> yeah, this this is quite a game. I can also honestly say that this is the best of this developer's games that I have played. Egypt is kind of an interesting course, if only because it introduces some of the more random physics quirks. Um, you might think, for instance, that a good idea for height would be to go over those and jump over them, or to do the same with this, but that actually slows you down massively. You want to just go around that stuff as much as possible. Um, the same goes for these ramps. You don't want to go over them, you want to jump over them, if at all possible. It's... yeah, physics. It is both applause and a rainstorm, I think. Um, the controls for this game are a little unusual. <laughs> you do not want a marathon of this guy's games. One of the others is insanely boring. I, I have yet to finish it on stream. Uh, as kind of noted, this is showcase percent. There are still a lot of weird speedrun strats with the physics that I'm working out on this. Also, the balloon stops you from jumping. It seems to do something very weird to the physical properties of your cart because it actually lifts you off the ground. Um, 
yeah, this this guy has made some games. This guy has also written a book, uh, which I believe someone who may or may not be in here, uh, someone in the Cusa Grande channel, has read. Apparently it's not very good, um, to the surprise of everybody. The physics quirks are definitely my favourite thing about this game, though, if only because at uh, random times I've done bits and pieces like driving around the track on top of one of the other carts. Um... Yeah, okay, third place on that one. I think next up is Holland, which is basically a mini golf course. Because that's what Holland is, it's just a giant mini golf course. You've got your tulips, you've got your windmills, and uh, you need to time your driving through the windmills so that you don't hit sails. So it's exactly like a mini golf course. We'll just spam out as many rockets as possible, and yes, if you're not careful with the ricocheting, you can hit yourself with your own rockets. Uh, although not in an interesting way like in Mario Kart, but just because the ricocheting is really weird and random. Um, again, not too much to say about this, except, you know, it's Holland. You can tell it's, it's all green, windmills, tulips. Oh, it's very good. Belaya, you actually can't drive around the finish line and win that way. Uh, it does have some standards when it comes to uh, how the course works, although we will be abusing them on one of the later stages. Um, oh, I really wish it would stop giving me those. That is the one power-up that I cannot figure out what it does. It does not shield you from bananas. I don't think it shields you from anything. Um, it does do weird things to the physics. And doing weird things to the physics lets us skip things in some slightly interesting ways. Now we're in Paris. And you can tell by the sound of, well, by the music. And uh, there's the Arc de Triomphe we're heading through. You've got to be very careful when you're driving close to the AI. There's the Eiffel Tower as a big brown blocky bitmap. Uh, yes, this is one of the shorter courses, thankfully, because it's also quite boring. Is, is that accordion music? I can't quite tell. I'm a little bit disappointed that most of the courses just have that one default track playing. Because some of the other music is great, although possibly it's only great by comparison or because I don't hear it in 20 second loops on the title screen. But it's got to be Paris. I mean, like I say, we've got the Arc de Triomphe right there. We've got a zebra stuck driving into it because his AI has gotten confused. Um, there's the Eiffel Tower we've just gone past. But yeah, as an example, uh, the bit we just passed, there was a gap in which we could have gone through that and gone straight to the finish line, but it notices you've done this. Uh, and it gets very upset. So, okay. We're on to magical now. This is where this is where things get really interesting. Cool. And this is Rainbow Road, except it's clearly not. This is Cloudland, um, and we're unfortunately back to this music again. I'm sorry about that. There is actually another kart racing game with animals in it, which I think might be good, but I need to look into that. And also, I'm not sure what you're talking about. This this is great. You can This has online multiplayer and everything. Um, there's not much interesting to say about this course, except for the fact that, you know, once again, it cut the corners as close as you can. And uh, completely ignore the, the, the markers indicating the finish line, because you can just sail right around them. And there you go, 42 seconds to do three laps of that course. Mystic, we are now in a fractal. Do not adjust your sets, it is meant to look like this. This is another one where you can horrifically abuse the corner cutting by essentially bouncing over these bits while the AI takes the intended track. Adding a jump button is one of the main things that breaks this game and lets you go through courses faster than intended. Oh, not that power up again. Marathon Lock. Yeah, don't worry, there is nothing wrong with your screens, it is meant to look like this. I'm not sure why it's meant to look like this, but it's meant to look like this. 
Uh, so once again, this isn't a particularly interesting course. This is one where you can cut the corners sufficiently that it doesn't really matter that you're spending all your time in first. The AI can't really catch up with your rubber banding anyway. So there we go. That's that one done. And then the AI takes over. And now the final one, which again has some decent music. Uh, or, well, different music. Underwater. Which is honestly one of my least favourite courses in the game. The reason for this is that it is incredibly narrow and you can't really cut corners very easily. So you are going to ram into the AI. The physics of this is going to cause you to careen off to one side and spin horribly out of control. Um, yeah, it's not ideal. The best you can really do is bounce up onto the side here, but because this game is really well programmed, there are physics glitches up there, and you might find yourself randomly stopping and going zero kilometers an hour for a moment. Your vehicle seems to aim for 60 kilometers an hour. Occasionally it will go up to 62. 63 is the highest I've ever seen it go. Uh, I don't know whether that's intentional or not. There we go, we're at 61 at the moment. <laughs> I'm sorry for uh, breaking people with the fractals. It's not my fault, blame Paul Bird. And then go and read his book. I think it's free on the Microsoft ebook store. Don't actually read his book. I couldn't make it very far into it myself. So, again, not much to say about this. We've, we do have a nice polygonal shark going around the outside, so that's good. There we go, that's the third course. We have one more cup to go. This is Rally, and this is where we can do some mildly abusive stuff. You will remember this course from before. This is the one where I showed off some of the silly things. I'm now going to show off something even more silly, by which I mean I'm going to totally ignore the track. Uh, this is quite tricky to pull off. I haven't mastered this yet. But basically, there is a way you can essentially... See, this is why I'm not too worried about doing this as a speedrun, as a showcase percent instead. But uh, it does kind of treat this as the track, and you can trick the game into going faster than you want to. Or faster than uh, you should be able to. By essentially starting to go downhill, and then jumping as you turn right to go uphill. Which lets you essentially completely ignore the track. And now, as far as I know, the characters affect absolutely nothing in the game. Uh, this isn't going particularly well. If you do this right, you can essentially skip huge amounts of this track. Um, unfortunately, in this instance, it doesn't actually seem to be going very well, so we might actually just need to do the course properly. Sorry about that. I blame marathons. We are still considered off the path, even though we're on the path, so I may actually have broken it. Oh no, there we go. It's decided we're back on again. We are now an entire lap behind. I won't attempt to do that again. If you get it right, it is very, very fast to do. And if you're speedrunning this, this is kind of the first level you attempt to do to see if you can actually make this work properly. Uh, but we're still going to be underestimate, so I'm not worried. We're showing things off. We're fine. Oh, so how are you all doing? Are you enjoying this? We're still a lap and a half behind. Three people have finished, and that means essentially, uh, you know, sitting here waiting while it tells me how everyone is better than me, as they're all in one big group. Moving very, very slowly, because I'm in sixth place. Jumping is one of the weird ways of breaking this game. There are a few other bits and pieces you can do with jumping uh, to speed your way through levels. This is the one that it's easiest to exploit. And I'm going to point out that there are several other little level skips that I'm going to attempt which will probably not work out as they're kind of difficult to do. <coughs> uh, Lagoon. This one has some interesting things. And I'm disappointed that they didn't use the underwater level music for this one, because I feel like it would have fit. Uh, we will actually stop and slow down there. Uh, one thing, for instance, is you can drive into that and it will catapult you into the air uh, a little bit further ahead from where you were. 
Uh, and there's, you know, you can't really fault a game for that. You drive into the water and instead of gently lifting you out or depositing you on the course, it actually just catapults you massively into the sky. And let's face it, this level is better than the actual game, Lagoon. Lagoon was not a very good game. This is one of the bits, I, I'm not sure how well it's going to show up on stream, but all of this ground is very, very bumpy. And bumpy ground is very, very bad for the physics because it will randomly decide that you are... Uh... There we go, we will leap up into the air once again. It will randomly decide that... Uh you are facing some sort of point-blank hill and you will suddenly drop your speed to zero. It's a very well-made game, as you can see. It has the best physics. There we go, another nice catapult into the air. I suspect there's a better way to abuse that than what I've found so far, but there's... This is something that I'm, I'm kind of still in the, the rooting stages of speedrunning. I suspect that these physics quirks and the way that it determines how far along a lap you are can be exploited horrendously. But either way, for the purposes of just showing the game off, I'm not too worried right now. And the final course in the game, Mountain Pass, which is a nightmare of physics, and I'm really hoping that we're going to see some of the real oddities here. We are unfortunately slightly reliant on RNG for some of these, uh, like this bit here, where we are driving uphill uh, on bumpy roads and it kind of just randomly messes with our speed. Like, we should probably have been going faster there, we should probably have sped up a bit, but no! Once again, I think it's jumping to the rescue. Jumping does occasionally slow you on landing by a small amount, but oh dear. That was a very bad thing to pick up at that point. And I apologise for the mouse cursor on the screen as well, it's just the fastest way of choosing the levels. Uh, this is also one of the more difficult courses, if only because of this section. Oh, we've got someone going backwards. See you later, lion. Also, I'd like to point out that that character is actually a lioness, but uh, the sprite in the top left on the minimap has a mane and thus is a lion. Now all of the AI has gotten confused, the physics have gotten confused, and we're kind of stuck going zero kilometers an hour on the track that we're supposed to be going along. It's a very well made game. There was a mouse cursor, but considering that I'm streaming this in 480p and running it in 1440p, um, and yes, this, this actually supports um, above HD resolutions, quite amazingly. <coughs> oh, everyone's gotten confused off to the left there, trying to sideswipe me. Um, I'm not actually sure how many people are going around the track properly at this point. I think we might have a couple of people going backwards. We'll stick down some banana peels just in case they decide they want to. So we're on the final lap now anyway, so whatever. But don't worry, things get really interesting after we finish the game. Because the real reason of this being showcase percent rather than a speed run is coming up. So, I'm going to take my hands off the keyboard and have a drink while uh, we sail to the finish line. <laughs> there we go. Look at that triumphant face. Okay, um, there are two more things to show off. First of all, there is a mini-game in this. If you uh, click on the giraffe's slightly wonky eyes on the title screen, then you essentially get a mouse-controlled version of Fruit Ninja uh, that lasts one minute, in which you essentially just waggle your mouse around and hack open eggs containing giraffes and lions. I don't think that's how giraffes and lions reproduce, but... You know, what do I know? I'm not a biologist, I'm, I'm sure that Paul Bird did his research. He's probably, he probably consulted all sorts of top scientists about the physics as well. 
So yeah, we've only got 20 seconds more of this horror to endure, and then we get on to the really interesting stuff. And by really interesting stuff, I mean really bizarre stuff and the things that are worth the price of admission. What I'm going to show you next are the movies. The movies are what you unlock with points when playing the game. Um, these use the game's assets to do things. 40,000 points, I had to come first many, many times to do that, because if you remember the diamonds are like five points each, picking them up doesn't help much. Uh, so we'll go through these in, in order, from kind of some of the less entertaining to the more entertaining, but we'll start off with the very first one to give you an idea of what we're in for. I love the way it focuses in on the hippo's butt. Anyway, that one loops. Uh, we will now go through them in a semi-random order based on how horrifically boring they are. This one is terrible. I was very disappointed when I unlocked this one. I love that in that music you can actually hear a gap in the moment where it loops. This is the very final one you unlock, and this was a massive disappointment to me. I was expecting seriously better for this. Can you guess what's going to happen? Oh. 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 Oh, yeah, that's, that's it. And then the elephant just sticks his arms out for some reason. There you go. And we've got horror music going on as well, for some reason. Um, I think next up we'll go with this one. And we have a giraffe kind of sliding along. And the giraffe is a jerk. Look at that face. No keeps. Space Odyssey is last. Look at his face, he is so happy at messing all of this up. <laughs> Next up, we will go with Christmas. Because who doesn't like Christmas? <laughs> with terrifying Hippo Santa slowly turning to face you. You really need to hope that you haven't been bad this year because you don't want to upset terrifying Hippo Santa. <sighs> uh, Shahali 9, this game I believe came out in 2016. Uh, we're moving on to the more entertaining ones now. Let's go with uh, a bit of Shawshank Redemption. I don't have much to say about that one, at all. Uh, next up, the second to last one, is this one with the rhino. And keep, keep your eyes open on this one. Watch the bricks as they kind of slot into place, because that's how physics work. No! Oh, oh, that rhino. Hey! Oh, what will he do next? And now the final one, and I'm going to shut up for this one because this one is genuinely brilliant. I love this one.
And there you go. That is the best one and so good. So, so good. That one is worth the $4 entry fee to this game. And that is also absolutely everything, I believe, in Wild Animal Racing, uh, barring split screen and multiplayer, which I obviously can't really show off. Uh, and that, I think, pretty much finishes us off just at Estimate. Um, before I go, I just want to quickly say thanks to people for letting me run this horrible, horrible game, and uh, thanks to everyone who's been working behind the scenes, Corndan, Koal, Brasentia, uh, and everyone else who I don't have time to list because I know you've been working super hard on this. Uh, and with that, I will end it here, and uh, I'll throw it back over to the host.